Good morning. Well, I've got the uh, irrigation stuff up and running. I did that already this morning. It is time to go and spray beans. We've got a beautiful sunny day. Wind is pretty calm, so it's good weather for it. Uh, we're going to try and spray all the rest of them today. I don't know if we'll get there, but that's the goal. So I got to start it up here. We got to load up. We got two full tanks of water, so we got plenty of water, at least for a while. And uh, we'll load up and get started. Okay, we are all loaded up. I mixed up enough for 80 acres. This first field we're going to, it's uh, 10 miles, one of those. But uh, we can do it all on one one trip, one fill. We don't have to take uh, anything down there, so it'll be okay. It's just gonna take us a little while to get there and back. So here's what we've got here. We've actually got three separate fields. They add up to 81 acres. Uh, the small one right here, Another one over there on the other side of the lane, I think there's 34 acres, and then the one in the back that's like 30, 32, something like that, and then this was whatever's left, 15, something like that, so, um, yeah, this one won't take very long, and we'll jump across the lane, and then we got a ditch there, we gotta go across the bridge to get to the back, and that one's kind of odd shaped, so we'll finish up back there. So these beans here are a little bit more up and down than the ones we sprayed down to Berkey last week. Uh, for the most part, they look really good. It's just you can see some height variations. I don't know if you can see it, but I certainly can. And uh, a lot of that is drainage, tile lines. Uh, there's a couple of wet spots that are the beans are really thin. And there's also some sand pockets down here that uh, they are quite a bit drier, and you can see that. So, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll take these. I'm happy with them. So a nice thing that our sprayer has, that I'm told the new deers don't, is these buttons and switches right here. So when I get a spot like that, I can shut the boom off so I'm not spraying bare dirt. Or just a couple of sections of the boom anyway. So I can, there's seven sections, I can shut each one of them off individually with these little switches right here. I made one pass around the outside, did almost half the field. 15 acres done, 19 to go. Sometimes you get these weird shaped fields. It's just how it is, but there's kind of two parts. There's here and then there's back there and it's real narrow between that point and that tree. Okay, well, we got this done. I ran out right as I was finishing up the last strip up there. We've got just a partial sprayer with that didn't get sprayed. So uh, that's good, I had what we needed. So we're gonna fold up and head back to the farm. The good news is, we're going from our farthest away field to our closest next. So the next one will be, uh, yeah, nice. We won't have to drive anywhere. So the load we're mixing up now, we're gonna spray my soybean plot out here, that whole field. We'll spray the one in the middle behind it, and then we're gonna spray this out here. Uh, it'll be more than one load, but we're gonna mix up one and do it now. we we'll do 70 acres, uh, and I'm using Miravis Neo on this, so. We need a thousand and fifty gallons, and then we'll go do it. Bounce, bounce, bounce. So you may notice that this field is in 30 inch rows, and I am driving across them. Well, there is a reason for that. I know it makes more sense to go with rows, especially in 30 inch rows where I don't actually have to run over any beans. Uh, but because I have my soybean plot up here, uh, I would be running, if I ran over beans, I would be running over two varieties out of six, and then it's not fair, and so it's just better for the plot, and fairness for all varieties if you drive across the rows on it instead of with the rows. So that's why I do this only on my soybean plot. Plus this field's a lot longer this way than it is this way, which means I have to make a lot less sprayer passes. I'm gonna have, what am I gonna have? One, two, three rounds to get across this whole field. So, it goes pretty quick. Okay, I ran out. Um, I got this field and that field sprayed, and I did a fair amount in here. I got uh, kind of the perimeter, and then that front half in front of where that equipment is sitting up there, right behind the barn sprayed, so. But there is still about 30 acres left out here. Um, I think I'm gonna put Triva Pro on the rest of it. I used Miravis Neo on the rest of these that I just did. Um, so I think we'll go with Triva Pro there, but 
it's lunchtime. I'm gonna go eat lunch, and uh, then we're gonna finish spraying all of the Miravis Neal that we've got. I've got two other fields, maybe three other fields, and we're gonna put it on whatever we've got for the chemical, use it up, and then we'll finish the last rest of this and one or two more fields, uh, and then we'll be done. So, let's see, probably do three more loads today, maybe. Look what we've got here, guys. Awesome. Al, you don't have to do that, man, but thank you. That's awesome. I appreciate it. I just got back from lunch. Couldn't have been gone 45 minutes at the most. You see that? The wind has really picked up in the last hour here, so... No more spraying today. Can't spray when it's this windy. So, I'm gonna find something else to work on, and I think I'm gonna work on that combine. Let's get those concaves out so we can inspect them and take a look at them. So, I'm gonna gather some tools up and we'll go back there in the back shed and work on it. Okay, so we've got to take these covers off, and get in here so we can get access to our concaves. And it's going to be dirty in there. <sighs> okay. So we're going to take all of these out. There are six of them in there. Um, we ha had to take these two out and change them to this style for corn and beans anyway. And we need to inspect the rest of them and make sure that none of them are bent. Basically these pieces in here. I had a couple of them last fall when we were changing them, or last winter, uh, that we noticed were bent on them. So we need to take them all out, look and see, and then we'll put all that stuff back in once we get them all fixed. So um, basically to get them out, uh, I've got to do some stuff with the computer and the cab. Uh, I've got to uh, stick a piece of cardboard under here and lower this as far as it'll go and then we take these bolts out and uh, there's a pin on the other side uh, I think they're bolted together there we got to take those apart uh, and then they'll slide out of there it's it's not terribly hard it's just not really fun either so uh, we'll get it okay well I got those bolts out of this plate um, I need to get a pair of pliers take this uh, cotter pin out so we can just get that whole plate out of our way um, but there you can see the rotor these are the threshing elements that kind of grind the crop against our uh, concaves that's what separates it from the uh, you know the, the gets the wheat out of the head the beans out of the pods the corn off the cobs that thing spins around really fast that's how it works so all right I'm gonna go get a pair of pliers all right, we got that plate out. Now we've got to go around the other side of the combine, take those uh, black covers off on the other side to get the pins that are holding those concaves in. Okay, so here's what we've got on the other side. We've got a uh, pin and then that piece that locks it in. So it holds it onto this bar. Now that one would slide out, except for that it's bolted to the other ones, but we'll do that, we'll get it. So um, I'm going to pull all of these and then we'll see if we can't slide them out that way a little bit, maybe make it easier to uh, get those bolts underneath out. Although just looking at them, I don't think that's gonna work. I am finally starting to make some progress. It took a long time for me to get those bolts that bolt them sections together out. Um, but I got one, that one's loose. This one, the, the nut, there's one bolt that's holding them together yet, but the nut is off. I just can't get the bolt out. So I, now that I got this one out of the way, I should be able to get them apart. And then this one is loose as well. And then the front one, obviously. So um, I just gotta get them pulled out here. Okay, there are the concaves in the order that they came out. I'm gonna take that whole pallet up to the shop to uh, inspect them. And if we gotta take some of them apart a little bit. So there you can see in there a little bit, this rotor spins like this really fast. There's a flighting on the front that kind of feeds the 
crop material into it. It separates the grain from the plant material here, basically threshes it. And then as you get towards the back, it's got those fingers instead of uh, these threshing elements. And that just is to stir it up and mix it and get everything separated so that the grain falls through the grate on the bottom and down onto our sieves. And uh, the, the stems and the straw and everything else just goes right out all the way through the back. Back through there. So, that was what kind of what we needed to do to get ready. Um, a quick, brief, preliminary inspection of these shows that we definitely have more, more, more bent pieces. This one here is for sure bent. This one here is badly bent. Um, we've got two more of this style in the shop. Basically, uh, you can see there's two different styles of concaves here. We've got what they call the Max Round and the Max Thresh. This style is a little bit more aggressive to help um, thresh the grain out and stuff, especially in wheat and small grains, you need that more aggressive concave in there. Um, and so we switch numbers two and three here. Uh, for wheat, we put the aggressive ones in, then for beans and corn, we put the round in there. So we leave one aggressive one in the front and then five of the, the round bar ones. Um, and that does a pretty good job. So these are not stock John Deere. Uh, these are aftermarket. The advantage to them is that they are half the width of the stock concaves. Uh, so they're lighter and easier to change. And you only have to change two of them, which would be equal to one of the other concaves instead of three of the big heavy ones. Uh, and I'll show you those ones are sitting up here on top of our little uh, kiln room. So those are our old ones. Uh, there's actually six of them up there. So those ones are, you can see the round bar. They're almost identical, now well, close, to those round bar uh, Condex ones. They're just twice as wide. And then these ones in the front here are uh, the small wire concaves that we used for wheat. So we would have to change all three um, before we got these Condex ones. So that's the advantages. You don't have to change as much. They're lighter when you do. They're supposed to do a better job uh, at this point for me, that's a little bit debatable and I'm now questioning the durability a little bit, but Condex has contacted me. They've reached out about, uh, replacing these and stuff. And so hopefully they'll make it right. I'm not going to say anything bad about them because, uh, I, they are taking care of me. So, um, hopefully they've improved the style maybe a little bit or something and they will, uh, hold up a little bit better because that's one year's use. Basically we put these in, um, in the winter before we did wheat a year ago. So they've done wheat, corn beans, wheat. And and we didn't even plant half of our corn acres that we normally do last year. So I don't know what happened. I don't know why they bent, but I, I hope that they've got it fixed. Okay, so here's my other two. There's the ones I just took out. Um, you can see this one here is, is really bad. Uh, that should not be sunk down in there like that. Uh, in fact, the problem is I don't have a new one to know exactly what it is supposed to look like. I don't know if they're all bent a little bit or uh, that one's bent really bad and this one's bent a little. You can see how this one's almost above flush there. Of course, that's loose. But this one is pushed way down. That one's almost flush. This one is flush. I don't know. I feel like a lot of these are bent. That one's bent. This one's bent. That one maybe. That one's okay. That one's maybe okay. Ah, I don't know what to tell this guy and how many to bring because it looks like a lot to me. This one's bent pretty bad. This one, I feel like this whole concave, these are all pushed down. I don't know. I'm glad they're coming to look at them. It's really wearing on that weld there. Except for this one. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, I don't know why those are so much different. Hmm. I don't know here. I don't know. These were awfully expensive for them to not hold up for more than a year or two. 
Okay, well I spent an hour on the computer again today. I got my QuickBooks all caught up. I was on February yesterday. Now I'm on waiting for the end of July to do this month. So, ah, that's good. Anyway, we gotta go move the irrigation. It's almost 4.30, so I'm gonna head up there and uh, do that. I am taking more fuel up. And also, I should point out that that QuickBooks that I'm updating, that's for my seed business, not the farm. We do a much better job of staying up to date with that on farm stuff. Um, but my seed business, I, I don't do a lot in the spring transaction-wise. It's all in the fall. And so it's easy to let two or three things a month go and then just catch up later. It's, it's not a big deal. See that little GoPro right there? I've been meaning to do this for a while. Get a couple different angles of some GoPro footage of the Traveler. I, uh, I don't know that I'll put it in this video. I may save it for a slow day. Depends on how long this one is. Okay guys, so I got this all started back up and running again and I'm sitting here at the generator putting my fuel in. And uh, I think it was yesterday I, I checked this voltage on the uh, alternator there. We were getting 14.75 volts. I'm getting the same right now. A lot of you said go check it at the batteries or check it at the back of the gauge. So I came over here to the batteries. Let me show you what we got. It's sort of hard for me to do because I can't hold three things at once, but let's see how I do here. Fourteen point seven five at the alternator, but only thirteen point four two at the battery. What's going on? And I know it could be a wiring something, but why then does my gauge still say ten and a half? Help me out here. I would try and get to the back side of that gauge to test the wires on the back of it, but I don't have the right Allen wrench with me here to take these uh, bolts out and. Uh, fold that cover down it's hinged here so I can't do that right now okay well that run that we just started is gonna get done at about 9 30 tonight it's the shortest run in the whole field it's only a four and a half hour pull and I slowed it down to get it to be four and a half um, so I'll go back up then and the next one's gonna be a full overnight pull which is good um, but I'm going home in the meantime here for a few hours um, so I think I'm just going to end it today here. So have a good night, everybody. If you have any questions and comments, leave them down below. Let me know what you think about that voltage stuff uh, and that, that uh, gauge and everything. Um, and uh, hit the like and subscribe buttons for me if you would, please. Uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow. So tomorrow is my Golden Harvest virtual kickoff meeting, which I'm not super excited about. Half the reason you go to these kickoff meetings every year is for the social interaction being able to talk to other people um, which I can't do like this online it's the whole country I'm not very excited about it um, but I've probably got to listen to that and it goes from nine to four which is going to kill most of the day so I haven't decided if I'm going to pull it up on my phone and put some earbuds in and just listen to it while I still do other stuff or if I'm actually going to sit in front of my computer and try and watch and listen to this meeting um but i've got to do that and it may severely limit my ability to make a video tomorrow especially if i'm just sitting in front of a computer so i would like to keep spraying especially if it's calm in the morning and i can keep getting that done um but other than that i don't know what else is going to be going on so there may or may not be a video tomorrow um but that's why so anyway thanks for watching have a good night we'll see you at some point